Hong Kong is an immigration capital. This video explores the migration wave happened in the 1980s due to the handover to the Republic of China and provides a new perspective by comparing the past and the person towards the term immigration. As Hong Kong famous director Zhang Yunting said, Hong Kong people immigrate since the 1980s to nowadays. Talking back to immigrants, Hong Kong people always immigrate back and forth. What's common between the past and the present is that all people aim to pursue a better life in foreign countries and miss their homeland deep in their hearts. Her production with the screenwriter Alex Law are renowned for their portrayal of humanity, which include a rich taste of the Sino-Hong Kong relationship, Hong Kong people's humanities and sentiments. Today, we will look through the Migration Trilogy series, including the illegal immigrants and Autumn's Tales, Egg Tales of Gold, they narrate the circumstances encountered by Chinese illegal immigrants, questioning of self-identity, the phenomena of class disparity and culture, language differences, and etc. The background of this theme can be related to the migration wave during the handover period of Hong Kong to the Chinese Communist Party. All of them focus on the Hong Kong people away from their homeland and how they adapt to the extreme environment as floating to different country seemed to be a normal phenomenon at that time. This video will first focus on analyzing the historical background of Hong Kong and China from the 1980s to 1990s, then explaining different socio-cultural phenomena reflected in each film with remarkable clips or scenes, and finally conducting critical analysis on that from my own perspective and using MOOC unit as supporting evidence. In short, it aims to share my insights about this outstanding film to the audience, so as to provoke reflection and critical thinking. In the 1980s, Britain and the People's Republic of China have been in the dispute over the democratization of Hong Kong. Serious negotiations over Hong Kong's future started in the early 1980s. While the People's Republic of China was ruled by the CCP, it would transform Hong Kong from capitalism to communism if without any negotiations. Hong Kong people at that time always worry about the future of Hong Kong. From their perspective or impression on the mainland China, China was a closed economy and lack of freedom. The system there was not complete and left behind Hong Kong. They were afraid of China's full control over Hong Kong and they felt anxious and uncertain towards Hong Kong development after handover to the CCP. As the colonist city of Britain, Hong Kong people was used to capitalism and was proud of their free market and freedom. They didn't want to change at all, therefore the thought for migration emerged in their minds to pursue a more stable life and freedom. The migration wave in 1980s started. Two of the film in trilogy narrates the life in the New York City in the 1980s when the city was tolerant and dangerous. The idea of the illegal immigrant was inspired by Mabel Jones' friends met in New York City's Chinatown when studying film there. Some of them are gangsters and illegal immigrants. The film depicts the violence, crime, and poverty exist in New York during the decade. Still, Hong Kong people try all methods to stay in the city as they didn't want to go back to their homeland for integration with China. On the other hand, the state is a developed country where economy thrives. Their fantasy with America never stopped even they didn't really earn a good living in New York City. Both films are shot in a semi-documentary style in New York City such as Chinatown, the Lower East Side and the Brooklyn Bridge. Adding more realism, the illegal Im immigrants used non-professional actors who drew on their experience of life in the city, with some even playing themselves. Moreover, the eight tales of gold were shot in Chaozhou and Kaipi, as when Mabel Jones was doing research on the background, she found that among the Chinese who came to the US from mainland China to pan for gold in the early years, most of them set off by boat from Guangdong. The first movies of Jones and Law is the illegal immigrant. The main plot is talking about an illegal immigrant, Zhang Junqiao, 
who lives under that bondage and the fact of deportation, enters into a fake marriage that develops into a real love but ends ultimately in defeated hope and the harsh reality of the American dream. At the beginning of the movie, John is sitting alone in the winter corner, overlooking the street scenes of Chinatown. It starts with a chasing scenes with the staff from the immigration bureau, but failing to escape the fate of being caught, facing the risk of deportation. In view of that, his young friend suggests that marrying his elder sister by playing until the government approves of his stay in the nation might be the simplest route to obtaining a green card. Therefore, James plays for a fake marriage with Chinese American Cindy Lee in order to keep their legal status in the states. Lee agrees to the plan on the condition that they never actually live together. She is desperate to make money for the cosmetic surgery he has always wanted. Although this plan seems to work at first, the immigration department grows suspicious when Jones' real new wife doesn't appear to be there after a few visits to his apartment. In order to eliminate their suspect, the couple decides to act in a more realistic way and demonstrate that their relationship is real, even though they are spending more time together out of necessity. They find that they actually do have things in common and have feelings with each other. They fall in love eventually. However, God plays tricks on people. When they are getting ready for the formal wedding, Lee gets shot during a gunfight between Chinatown triads. The story ends with a gloomy atmosphere. In the last scenes, Jin Chao plays homage to Cindy in the cemetery. And the camera slowly zooms out from the cluster of tombstone to the entire Manhattan skyline. As does, there are many skyscrapers, and I don't know how many stories of being forced to leave their hometowns and wandering are buried behind them. The tombstones are silenced, and the world is blank. According to Ford. Who teaches in the history department at the University of Hong Kong, Mabel Jones centers her narration around newly arrived Chinese immigrants to New York, people who are not typically the center of attention in commercial films. Instead, she challenges us to reevaluate issues of borders, nation, and cultural differences in terms of transnational perspective. The movie depicts a city that is both strange and familiar, a cultural place where Eastern and Western influence collide and new identity are negotiated. In a world where mobility has become the norm, the interpretation of the film is a reconfiguration of genres within the framework of diaspora, explore the dichotomies of Chinese masculine identity. Those who fail to achieve economic success and the virtuous household provider and defender of tradition on one hand. Whatever the case, the movie stays clear of Hong Kong new wave pessimism and Hollywood cliches. In short, the film serves as a kind of consolation for the fear that Hong Kong residents have about the handover by fostering understanding between people and communities overseas. I don't even know you. You understand? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The second theme is an autumn's tales. This time, Jen and Law depict a romance between two immigrants that never quite takes off. The lineup as the two leads are Zhou Yunfat and Zhong Chaohong for an autumn's tales. Chao makes the impoverished but likable Figgy, short for figure head. Who gets through life in any which way he can? His life changed when he's charged with looking after the well-bought up Jennifer, a new arrival from Hong Kong. Although the two can't stop fighting at first, romance slowly blossoms. But the time never seems to be right, and the love affair never launches. The scenes in which Chow chases after Jung as he she is driven away to a new life on Long Island is the most memorable. It features a much talk about shot in which Chow seems to be running his heart out without getting anywhere. Their love stories appear to be hampered by everything, including their family dynamics, educational background, and aspiration to move to Africa. Faking words of jobs to make ends meet, mostly in Chinatown's Chinese community, and he longed to open a restaurant by the waterfront. Conversely, Jennifer, driven by her wanderlust, gradually established herself in New York, moving from Chinatown to the neighborhoods of Long Island. 
Everybody achieves their goals with a happy end, signifying different approaches to assimilating into American culture, as suggested by Frog. The theme illustrates challenges for immigration population trying to adjust to life in the U.S. There is a sense that Jennifer signed at a suited window and really wished she could see the Brooklyn Bridge outside the window. This suited window symbolized the dilemma of new immigrants living in the U.S., yearning for light in a gloomy place and yearning for a better life in a bad condition. In addition, we can see the interrelated aspect of identity being played out on the screen. For instance, the gender is race and race is gendered, and thus the system of representation and not one category is responsible for the experience of social inequality. Gender, race, class, sexuality, ethnicity, and nationality do not act independently of one another. Instead, they interrelate. To form a system of oppression that reflects the intersection of multiple forms of discrimination. Besides, the film contests the stereotype of Chinese Americans as a model minority. The film features multiple and diverse examples of Chinese individuals living in New York City. For example, the film deploys humor, hot water, sayonara to make the point that many Americans have a difficult time. Distinguishing between diverse groups of foreigners from Asia, also the English level of Chinese immigrants, like Veggie, is low. Canto slangs emerge as guests, such as ta bo, meaning teapot in English, but in this case, is meaning for trouble. Veggie is a typical Chinese immigrant. He works odd jobs in a Chinese restaurant, drives a Sport car with doors that can't be opened lives in a poor neighborhood of Chi Chinatown and leads a drifting and rootless life. It shows how economic and education privilege connect to the ideal of the American dream, and it is important to think about how identity is fluid yet also bounded by stereotypes and bias. According to Ford. And autumn's tales can be analyzed from a transnational and intercultural standpoint involving China and the U.S., with a focus on the portrayals on the Chinese diaspora and the increasing interdependence between the two peoples. Hong Kong films always revisit American myths in the light of multiple and hybrid connections between the two cultures. The main focus is to understand the images that Hong Kong residents desire the project of themselves. Prior to Hong Kong's handover to China during a time of transnational migration and identity uncertainty, moreover, five socio-political variables can be identified through the theme: mobility, sense of place, trust and confidence in the law and the legal system, global citizenship, and perception of inequality are important to investigate the intention of Hong Kong residents to migrate to. Other international destination. It is also useful in thinking about everything from identity to nationalism to globalization in this film. The films record the mingling of people from different social classes in global cities, particularly New York's Chinatown, illustrating the cultural and social adjustment and alienation for new Chinese immigrants in global city. There are also bits of Jen's own experience and memories of various places and events. The connected history of various nations are informed as aspects of 20th century migration and globalization. From past to present, migration wave never stops. Jen follows an autumn's tales with eight tales of gold, which is considered the last of her migration trilogy. The background of this film is that New York taxi driver Slim, aided by Sam Woo Hong, left his hometown in Shantou without seeing a word during the Cultural Revolution and smuggled to the U.S. and finally considered himself a U.S. citizen when his green card is confirmed. After that, he decided to visit his homeland, China. On arrival, Slim finds her his family has moved to Taishan and initially has to face the crits of the. Country of his birth before he meets childhood friend Jenny, still known to him by his, her nickname. 
Eight Tales of Gold, a drama set in the chaotic metropolis of New York and the rural Chinese countryside, thrives on contrast and what is seen rather than what is said. When Slim couldn't stand the pain of homesickness and decided to return to his hometown, he borrowed eight tales of gold, such as gold watches and gold necklaces, from his friends so that he could return home in fine clothes. When he got home, Slim discovered that his parents had moved to the countryside for a second child, which was not allowed by the one-child birth policy. For the love affairs, Mabel Jones crafts an unlikely love tale that teases at deeper feeling of both silently, slowly pair. Similar to an autumn's tale, the effect is bittersweet. As the story progresses, the contrast between Jenny, a local, and Slim, a proud New Yorker who has returned home, creates the necessary chemistry. In the early days of Slim. Slim relationship with Jenny, she always spoke with half-baked English words and was immersed in the romantic fantasy of American life. Slim often poured cold water on her from time to time. As the contact deepened, the two slowly. Their fundamental differences also gradually dissolved, but her future was already paved. At last, Jenny has obtained a visa to go to the U.S. with. Her future husband, who owned a restaurant in Chinatown, New York, Slim also start a blind date journey under the arrangement of his parents. They didn't come together ultimately. The perspective from Ford on the autumn's tales can also be applied in the eight tales of gold. It goes beyond assimilation concerns in favor of a multicultural discourse, as it tackles the myth of the American dream, which is typically connected to the chance to succeed through hard work. The movie affirms that the U.S. continues to provide upward mobility for its immigration population, but it also serves as a reminder of the vital role played by the Chinese community in the nation, one that goes beyond the black-white binary discourse to provide an Asian perspective on identity construction. As Slim was a hardworking taxi driver, he devoted his life to getting a green card in the states. The audience learns about the very unique life that are also the experience of thousands of immigrants who slim. Ultimately, the central question is how to practice multiculturalism and become an American without sacrificing one's Chinese identity. On the other hand, the film discusses the one-child policy in the mainland China, which was quite sensitive to be mentioned. It reviewed the social circumstances as the 1980s in the mainland, comparing with the America. It forms a great contrast where America develops to be strong and free from the fashion of the world. What's common among three themes are the main character's low education level and alienation in the foreign country. However, immigration is not the answer to life. What the audience can glean from the Theme is the bitterness of immigrant life, but in the film, the misfortunes in life are diluted in the forms of gas. When Jordan Fat was mistaken for a taker scrapper by the police in front of Broadway, he sat anxiously because she he was not fluent in English. You talk all of yes talk, I talk all of no talk. His unexplainable suffering is both distressing and funny, and it also brings out the aphasia of new immigrants in society, which is like having a tongue cut out. Moreover, the background of the poor China in 1980s is illustrated. While Jin Chao in the illegal immigrants, who was caught in the great struggle of the Cultural Revolution, was carrying three bullets. After pulling out all bullets, he decided to leave this place. Peggy in An Autumn's Tales had a beautiful illusion of future life in America when leaving Hong Kong, and Slim in The Eight Tales of Gold left hometown without saying a word during the Cultural Revolution. All of them having their own hope and ideals of life when leaving the homeland. Comparing to the present, the rationale for migration remains unchanged. Still, can be related to the Sino-Hong Kong relationship. It was complicated and contradictory for me, a born and raised Hong Konger, to talk about this topic. But I think I may be the generation who must suffer the consequences brought by the assimilation with the mainland China. 
The idea of one country, two system may be still existing, but the pursuit of freedom and democratization must be in vain under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. This is an undeniable fact that every Hong Konger who pursue freedom understand that we lose in the two thousand and nineteen battle. On the other hand, what different is that nowadays immigrants are legal and their education level is much higher than people in the old days. Most of them can quickly adapt to the new environment and assimilate into foreign culture. However, the homesickness cannot be eliminated as the roots of them are still in Hong Kong. Therefore, people move back and forth. There are possibilities that they may move back to their homeland in the future. The story is to be continued.